Welcome to Vegas Circle with Paki and Chris, and today uh, we are excited to sit down with the marketing guru, founder of IMS uh, Marketing yep. and the Las Vegas Scoop. We got yep. Steve Capo Newland. Yes, sir. Um, we also got his business partner with him, Pierre. So welcome to the Circle, fellas. Welcome. welcome. Appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, so it's good, man. So jumping right in, man. I was doing some research on you. Mm -hmm. You got a very unique story, man. I saw you were working with Private Club Records yeah. in Tokyo, Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. How uh, did that happen? Yeah, I was in the um the military, the Air Force at one point in time. Okay, and uh, got out the Air Force and started working as a contractor for the Navy. So uh, that was at Yokosuka, which is like an hour south of Tokyo. I ended up out there working, and then um I ran into. 24 hours who at that time was Royce Frizzy that's made in Tokyo's older brother okay so um they weren't even doing music really at that time and then um as time went by you know I was running nightclubs out there doing party promotion stuff you know I pretty much had the the entertainment side of the game on lock with all the Americans and the military people so I built my following up and then um you know making contacts with artists and everybody that was coming out there bringing them out there and then eventually I left Japan. I think I left in 2010 and moved okay. to Atlanta. And then from Atlanta, you know, I was there for a, a good bit of time and then I ended up here. So, so you know, kind of so growing good. a business in a country that you're not familiar with, it kind of something yeah. that it seems like it builds a baseline yeah. anywhere. Because if yeah. you could do it in a country where nobody, yeah. one, you don't speak the language, yeah, exactly. two, you don't know the culture, exactly. and if you're able to do it there, like what kind of tidbit did you learn over there that you felt like really helped you when you're trying to grow your business um, in, in the states communication is important you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like at the end of the day um just being making sure when you're doing any business with anybody both parties understand you know in total every detail of whatever you know that that business that you're about to take on you know because that was the biggest thing was the communication barrier yeah so sure. like we always they had their interpreter i had mine mm -hmm. you know so anytime it was serious some serious money being pushed across the table we had our yeah. little interpreters and you know they the japanese people in general they're very um structured and they're very um old school with everything in every aspect in every way they're just traditional people so doing business with them is like, we gotta have a meeting to talk about a meeting that's gonna be the next meeting before our real meeting. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's that many layers of like, yeah. damn, like how many times do we gotta talk about this, you know? Yeah. But it, it's cool, it, it, it helped me out, it helped me out a lot because, you know, my attention to detail with certain things is like really sharp. So I think that I got that, you know, from that time in Japan, yeah. just, you know, always being sure that you know everything is everything on black and white and being on point you know so, yeah that teach me patience that's for yeah, sure <laughs> yeah no it's a headache it was yeah. a headache bro i, I definitely had my moments where i like kind of you know popped off on a couple of people because i just was frustrated like yeah. i'm like yo in america things move way faster than this we don't move this slow we don't you yeah. know what i mean yeah. we don't need five meetings to talk about the meeting we're gonna have yeah. you know it's, it's not gonna yeah. change anything it's right 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 <laughs> but you know it's, it's just different you know so you mm -hmm. adapt you you know and find your way being in the music industry mm -hmm. you i know you learned a lot with that setup and you were doing with basically developing artists mm -hmm. in the whole nine what yeah. was kind of your role because i saw you work with like rich the kid little yeah. scrappy people like yeah, that yeah 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 i just saw scrappy too i he's saw he was here, here for the, yeah, for the grammys here. Here. i was yeah. kicking it with him um uh in the music game like i started off just helping my friends you know what i'm saying just helping my friends come up however they could come up everyone had interest in doing music but you know one or two friends kind of took it seriously and i thought that they were actually pretty dope so i was like all right i'll help i didn't know what the hell i was doing initially you know i was just doing whatever seemed like common sense and then doing a lot of research also like what does a music manager do what does a <laughs> yeah. producer do what does the road manager do you know what i mean just yeah. looking up little stuff and um you know i was doing this while i was in the military so i couldn't really fully commit to it at the time mm -hmm. and um you know, so I kind of fell to the back burner until I got out. And then once I got out, I, I, I started taking it more serious and starting to educate myself. When I got out the military, my mom was like, yo, you should hook up with your god brother. He'd be doing this thing with some rapper. And I was like, who? This is like 2003. I'm like, who are you talking about? And she's like, oh, it's this guy, like 20 cent, 25 cent, 40 cent, 50, <laughs> 50. 50 cent. I don't know the hell his name is, but he, he's some big guy apparently. He's popping. So I'm like, all right, this damn. This is three? Yeah, this is 2003. Oh, this, 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 right, yeah. this right this right when it's bubbling. Yeah, ridiculous. 50, yeah, 50 hit. So yeah. I called him. I said, bruh, what you doing right now? He was like, oh, shit, I'm at the airport. I'm with Fifth. I was like, mm, it's true. 
<laughs> it's true. All right, cool, cool. I was like, bro, I'm trying to get in the game. I'm trying to learn. Whenever you got time, let me know. I'll come to New York. So I took the trip up to New York and then, um, you know, I met everybody. Um, and you're originally from Jersey, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was born in so Jersey. So that's home. It's basically home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Tri-state area. Um, that's all family up there. You know, my okay. my father's from Jamaica. My mom's from Panama. So like, oh, so they all mix. moved to New York. You know, okay. that story. But and yeah. how did you guys connect, man? Being with, with Pierre and everything, be a business partner. You guys run IMS t- yeah, together. Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Okay. So he has his own company. I have my own company. But together, you know, we a lot of our services and everything that we do, like you know, we go through each other anyway. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, so it's, like what I don't have, he has. What right. he has, I don't know. Right. So vice versa. Right. It works that way always, man. A lot yeah. of times you can kind of hit the miss. Like we talk about all the time. It's yeah. like we laugh because I'm the people person. He's the business guy. Right. You got to merge those together. Right. We you know? actually met in LA at a cannabis yeah. event for Wiz, for Wiz Khalifa. And, um, okay. And a mutual friend introduces him was all like, yo, this is like you in Vegas. He does what you do. And oh, I'm, crazy. Like, this is what you do in That's LA. So we really connected on the social media marketing front. And um, we kind of had the same type of clientele. Uh, I've been in A&R for over a decade and he's been in the music management and talent management and marketing aspect as well. So it was just like bread and butter, you know what I mean? So. Mm-hmm. We really been stacking up a lot of paper together, so that's 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 a lot of um, a lot of fun to have, and you know, being able to provide people with what we provide in terms of marketing, a lot of people don't know where to go to get where they want to yeah. get to, you know. Yeah. So um, mm-hmm. we get free game out every day on our social media. There's f- tons of free game being put out there. Uh, but he's he's just uh, he does what he does really well, and and he's got Vegas on lock, and with Las Vegas Scoop coming up, you know that's yeah. that's that's kind of a whole new ball game for him. You yeah. know, that goes beyond the social media. So now you're talking potential network plays. So yeah, that's where my mind always goes. Whenever I do something, I'm always thinking the bigger picture. What's the how many zeros can I get? Mm-hmm. You know, from whoever and whatever we're doing. So yeah. You know. Yeah, we definitely got to get in uh, to Las Vegas Scoop at, at some point because I was looking that up. It's absolutely hilarious yeah. what y'all were doing with that. But <laughs> yeah, with yeah. IMS, so you, what kind of services do you guys fully provide? So you guys still are on the music side too and social media? It's an agency? Is that kind of how you guys mirror? Yeah, mirror? I mean, at the end of the day, um, I used to provide, you know, a lot of music services for my own artists. And, okay. um, you know, that just came from being in the mix with guys of, you know, like I said, my brother working with G-Unit, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Chevy Woods is my blood cousin, you know, and Taylor Gang, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. be it, those influences were always around me. I just didn't focus or tone in on it because I was, you know, I was in the military. I had other stuff going on, so sure. I couldn't even really be a part of that world realistically. Mm-hmm. They kind of so, restrict you too. Right, right. Yeah, it's yeah. very restrictive. Yeah. And the lifestyle just doesn't mix. So, um, you know, um, at the end of the day, I had those resources through meeting the people that I met. I made the, those handshakes and relationships and I built those relationships on my own because I've always believed relationships take you further than money. Mm-hmm. So well, I know people great. that yeah. I know people that got more money than me that can't yeah. go to places I can go, that can't shake the hands that I can yeah. shake. You know, they can't yeah. be in the rooms that I can be in. And you might have millions and I, you know, yeah. got co- I'm a hundred thousand there, you know. Yeah. It's but cool. you read the energy though. Exactly. You read the energy, exactly. We talked about exactly. earlier. Yeah. Exactly. So people don't understand. I'm glad you brought that up because mm-hmm. people do not understand that. Uh, like one of our mutual friends, yeah. David, you yeah. know, we yeah. talked about that all the time as when we went to dinner. It's like people gotta realize you gotta read the body language of people. Right. Mm-hmm. Especially when you're in another country like we were talking about earlier mm-hmm. with Colombia. So I'm mm-hmm. glad you brought that up. Yeah, so, for sure. For do sure. you I'm teach like them cons- that? Or I'm sorry, oh, go ahead. It's like one consistent theme that we see. Everybody everybody's like networking is the key to success. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of sure. what everybody is for sure. picking on. And because you're like, not born into you're not born into this friendship. We're not, you yeah. know, we yeah. just met today, but yeah, who knows? Sure. Ten years from now, you know, we look back yeah, and you, you hey, example. thank God we we linked up yeah. that one day because now we're we're billionaires, you know, because yeah. we you know you had a plug that I needed or vice versa and yeah. you know whatever yeah. happens, you know that's why me and Pierre exactly. are so cool is like, you know, we were just at a cannabis event just chilling and you know yeah. a couple of years later like the things that we've done like if you would have told me then like yo bro you about to do this this that that <laughs> you and P about yeah. to do this this yeah. that y'all about to make this yeah. that that I would have yeah. been like nah for real yeah, yeah. 
Like we him? Know like, since right, 2012. Cool. Same situation. Right. And you we told me I'd be on a podcast, yeah. never in a million years. I thought right. I, I talked right. him into this. I dra- <laughs> dra- dragged him into yeah, this. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's almost like you, yeah. you, you manifest it, but really, yeah. it's just what the universe has in store mm-hmm. for you. Right. You just go along with it, or you right. fight it. Right, right, right. 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 If, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But what happens here is, is it really works out for us because a lot of people know what we can do based off of our social media and the content we put out. It's quality content. Yep. So whether it be content on his page or mine, um, even before we were both verified on Instagram, we were verifying people. We had the avenues oh. to do so. So when you know we have relationships with over 150 to 200 different publications, national syndicated publications, international uh-huh. publications. So all of that put together is, is kind of how we are able to put a package together for people to really get their craft out. So with musicians, it works because we have the total package. Mm -hmm. You can go from A to Z with us and get it done. And you'll probably get it done in less time and more cost effectively than you would go into an agency having to pay an agency fee, you know? So Mm -hmm. a lot of our services are very, very hands-on. We're very tech savvy. So we know the back end work of stuff too, you know, how to get the websites up and running, how to get the blogs up, how to curate your Instagram profiles to, Mm -hmm. to, to get to the verification. Once you're verified, then, you know, we have other uh, avenues through Facebook ads and whatnot, where we start pushing your music videos and your music, but this can go to anybody. If it's entrepreneurs, if it's, if it's actors, if it's models, we, we just, you know, make a few adjustments and and got the full menu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. The blueprint is the blueprint is the same. It's just, you know, it just depends on whatever industry or lane that you're in, you know, what I noticed too, you guys work with multiple different brands too. And I noticed, Mm -hmm. so you were part of the Popeyes? Thing with your company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How the so, heck did you put? Because so I don't even eat Popeyes, friend. man. I went because of that yeah, daggone so sandwich. A mutual, <laughs> a mutual yeah. friend had reached out about that. That okay. was a good PR in, um, in New York. And um, they were tasked with building a team of influencers and like internet, you know, secret Illuminati button pushers. You said you know? Illuminati, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so I was one of those people that was asked to um, support because at the time, I was building social media accounts um, through, at that time on like record levels, you know, like getting people five, 10, 15, 20,000 followers a week organically, you know, like just Damn. being able to use the tools that were out at that time. And um, so, you know, I had a good, my name was hot in the social media underworld, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, and that was just working with Russians and a bunch of like hackers and, you know some black web stuff you yeah. know some crazy nerd stuff talk like off. we need to talk a lot about that yeah, you know yeah, so it got deep up, yeah. it got deep and then yeah. um you know we figured out some loopholes some big loopholes um they closed a lot of those now but you know for yeah. that two three years it was a good run so um just being a part of that team and was you know i was helping press buttons you yeah. know behind y'all the figured it out because the popeyes thing up. went absolutely crazy yeah yeah the lines and everything that y'all did with that was unreal yeah, especially was during dope. the pandemic it was so, dope. Right and, before it, the pandemic. and it paid well so that's what's cool. up man yeah, that's good man to be able to have that stamp so you be able to yeah. show hey this is what we've been able to do as, yeah, as our menu look. you know yeah it was a good look for sure that's great man so you guys how do you generate new ideas that you guys want to bring to the table do you guys just try them or you blank canvas and do it or you guys work together as a team or you Pick people's different. I brain think or? a lot of the stuff just starts with us. Honestly, if I'm being blunt, like we yeah. just, you know, be in a room smoking. Yeah. And uh, you know, stuff Come on, just create, comes, creative just ideas. Cre- <laughs> I created Las Vegas Scoop. I, you know, yeah. I smoked the joint and um you know, I created Las Vegas Scoop in my bed, like watching cartoons, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. Man, you know it would be dope if somebody made this page and then I went looking for it. I was like, Who's got anything similar to this? But everything I found was just like memes yeah. mm-hmm. and you yeah. know, it, it didn't give me like an authentic, like, oh, this is Las Vegas. This is more, yeah. Yeah. you know, representative of what's really happening in the city. Because Atlanta, again, being from Atlanta, Atlanta had one. Atlanta had ATL Scoop. But mm. ATL Scoop was kind of like a crime blog kind of thing. It was like, oh, there was a shooting over here. There was a oh, car okay. robbery over here. There was this over here. So it kind of made you like kind of scared to come to the city. It wasn't like it was it's good to be informed about information, but like. You know, you kind of got to sprinkle out some funny stuff in there sure. too. Entertain somebody and, you know, be in, informative. Give the weather report, something else, you know, other than yeah. just you're going to die. Just if you negative, go outside. negative, negative. Yeah. Like the regular news. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes. I was like, I didn't want to be that. Of course, I have elements of that because it's, yeah. again, it's informative. You know, you need yeah. to know certain things. Yeah. You know, if, if it happens, we all should be aware, like, oh, okay. We I mean, at least some, you know, help somebody avoid 
a negative situation by That's ending true. up in that same area or whatever, yeah. you know? So I do that, but I try to keep it more light, more entertaining, okay. you know? Um, you know, y'all figured out the out. lane of entertainment, man. Because yeah. I let y'all up. It's absolutely hilarious. Yeah, I mean, to do. Vegas yeah. is the best yeah. city for content because yeah, we have the sure. weirdest people in the world walking around <laughs> every day. The entertainment capital of the world. Yeah, too, so we, 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 we have a collection of people that you won't find in any other city in America. I don't care. Mm -hmm. L.A., Miami, yeah. New York, whatever. Like, the 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 mix of people that we get in this city yeah. is <laughs> unreal. It's, just people watching. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. unreal. You can yeah. stand for hours and just look at countless Hollywood, herds of Hollywood people. got some pretty big, pretty, pretty. Hollywood was wild. Yeah, Hollywood was pretty wild. Wild. people, but yeah. Vegas definitely, yeah. definitely got. Uh, Vegas is a small city, so I guess you see a lot more of it because LA is spread out. But yeah, they're definitely there. It's yeah. like you hang out at Fremont for an hour, just sitting down, you see everything uh, you can think. Right, that's the, right. that's probably the yeah. difference, like you said. It's concentrated. Right. It's right. concentrated crazy. Right. Yeah. We're, we're we're definitely a small, big town. You know. How did you play that out? So you you basically had. Las Vegas Scoop, which you guys mm -hmm. call the TMZ of Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. That's how have you branded it. But you guys mm -hmm. have three different sites, right, from my understanding? Um, well, we kept losing pages. We kept losing okay. Instagram accounts. So the original Las Vegas Scoop account got disabled at like 60,000, which killed oh, me because wow. I built that organically. And it was growing quick. And then, um, then we made a 2.0, lost that one at like 44,000 a couple months later. And then had a third account, uh, lost that one. It was well, no, I still have that one. I still have that one. How you? How do you um, lose it? People just people. Uh, you just it flag just... it. Just getting oh, okay. flagged for stuff. Some of the stuff, like initially early on, I was censoring, but not really. You know, okay. I didn't put anything too extreme, but there were certain little things, like a, maybe it was a fight video or something okay. that. You know, it would get flagged mm -hmm. for bullying because the guy getting his ass kicked in the video was got upset it. and yeah. started to report, oh, they're bullying me, they're bullying me. You got know, it. no, you yeah. just got your ass kicked on camera. <laughs> you know, it happens, it happens. But um, yeah, that was the initial problem. So now I've gotten a lot better with like knowing like, uh, nah, it's too, how do you put it out? Yeah, it's you... like, uh, can I can I alter this or can I edit it just enough that it, it cuts off the, r the right part or, you know, so it's like, I'm learning. How to adapt with the with the app, you know, as they change their rules, then I have to adjust the content to fit so I'm within the guidelines. Yeah. It seems really important, especially yeah. now with all this sen almost censorship that's happened on these social media platforms, and you're starting to see like Elon Musk going on Twitter, and they're really trying yeah. to push these less censored businesses. How mm -hmm. do you feel like you're going to adapt with that and moving to different platforms where maybe you are allowed to be a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more uncensored or unbiased? I mean, it, it, I mean you just got to know your platforms and know what, um, what you're allowed to get away with on which one. So the more extreme content, I'll say, goes on the Twitter. Mm -hmm. Las Vegas Scoop 1 is the Twitter. Got it. So... If it's something that I'm like, ooh, yeah, this is going to Twitter. I know instantly when I when people submit content to me, I'm like, mm, Twitter, <laughs> IG, neither. You got know, it, so it. you know how to filter it. Now. Yeah, I I know. Too, yeah. yeah, exactly. I know what it's like. Okay, this is safe enough for IG and and has entertainment value or. This is going straight to Twitter. This is okay. crazy. Does yeah. it make it easier or harder um, to grow a platform on Instagram? What is so moderate, moderated? Where you? It's it's harder. It yeah, stale. It seems to me it's going to become stale at some point. Yeah, yeah. Everything everything that's popular dies eventually. You know, if if it can happen to MySpace and mm -hmm. you know LimeWire and Napsters and you know there's there there's tons of uh, Vine. You know that lived for like six weeks. You know mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah, um, TikTok you know, stole their whole, whole yeah, whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. Instagram took it. Too, Instagram yeah. Big Brother and yeah. took over. But um, at the end of the day, there's always going to be something new. It's just figuring out what the new thing is going to be before gonna everybody be. else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Be Instagram on the Web three platform. You think that's the next? I think so. I think okay. they're going to make. I think it's gonna, the Instagram is going to. We're going to have our real life Instagram. What we do in Web two now with our real life photos. Web three is going to be our Web three self. So. If, Whenever you guys get your avatars, it's gonna be your avatar. Mm -hmm. Okay, Snapchat of your avatar in the club with all your little avatar friends. You know what I'm saying? At a concert somewhere. Like you I'm producing it. right yeah. now. Um, I'm producing a metaverse show with D. Uh, well, I, I can't even say the name right now, but yeah. a very popular DJ, a top ten DJ in the world, and we're doing a metaverse show. And um, we have ten thousand tickets sold, and all ten thousand of those people have an avatar. 
because the NFT that is oh, hosting man. the show, their av their NFT is an avatar. So you have to purchase an avatar. It looks like you, whatever, however you want to design it. But you can attend concerts virtually with your avatar. But you don't think it's wow. gonna like be a watered down version of a metaverse? Um, essentially, like that's uh, what I get the impression. Multiple, I get. multiple versions. There's gonna yeah. be yeah. censored versions. There's gonna be uncensored versions. But really, I don't think you're gonna be able to censor much on the metaverse. I think that makes it a lot harder. Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's straight organic. It's just straight so organic, yeah. but also it's decentralized. So there's gonna, you know, there's literally no rules to it. Yeah. You know, I ran into, and I can't think of the brother's name it's from Zeus Networks. On mm -hmm. Zeus Networks, I met. I can't think of his name for the life of me, but uh, they're super un unrestricted, mm -hmm. but they have their own platform mm -hmm. to be able to just do whatever. Mm -hmm. And they've got um, Jocelyn, I think her name is, mm -hmm. Cab Cabaret or yeah, something like Jocelyn. that. So they had that on there on the network mm -hmm. and things. So I was curious if like, is that y'all's goal with, with um, the uh, Las Vegas Scoop where you guys can bring in other networks, you guys, I saw you guys are doing some stuff with like the MMA where you guys mm -hmm. can do, um, you know, sports events and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. What's like the ultimate goal for Las Vegas Scoop? Um, ultimately just to be its own platform, you know, or okay. its own network or, you know, if TMZ can have a channel, why can't I? That's real. Yeah. You know, love it. Why yeah. not? Like, yeah. Especially yeah. in Vegas, man. You got it. Right. Be in, right. Be in Hollywood. So, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, there's nobody else doing what I'm doing. So. Yeah. In your way. I mean, can you imagine too. checking right. into a hotel in Las Vegas and on the TV commercial when it gives the, the welcome infomercials mm -hmm. on the television? You have Las Vegas Scoop, kind of how they have Mario Lopez doing the E thing yeah. all the time. <clears throat> Instead yeah. of that, it could okay. be Las Vegas Scoop on every TV in every hotel room. Mm -hmm. Like you know, it. So. It makes sense because everybody seems like in Vegas, you're pushing everybody else's product. Vegas doesn't right. push its own products. It right. seems very weird to me, right. especially from an entertainment perspective. Mm -hmm. We push everybody else's entertainment, but right. not the homegrown talent, not the homegrown um, um, platforms that you're trying to build. It's, mm -hmm. it, there, there's a need for it and a want for it. And mm -hmm. I think people are starting to come around to that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure. All, every, all the, the following and everything that we've built up now. Like from when I first started, it's only it's only a year old, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I, I created year. I created Las Vegas School last March. Oh damn! You know? okay, I didn't know that. Um, yeah. Just when we was on lockdown, like damn near the week of the lockdown, and I was just in my room, like <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> I need to occupy these hours. Like I can yeah. only work so long on the computer, you uh, know, before it's like I'm burnt out. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it was um. It's amazing Weirdo, what's been yeah. created during this pandemic. <laughs> right? yeah. Yes. Oh, the pandemic was a blessing to a lot yeah. of people. Yeah, yeah it's like a all these platforms to to are, earn your leisures. And well, all people had people time. Got, people had time, yeah, you know? It wasn't like, all right, we got to hustle and bustle and we driving to work and spending 10 hours a week in traffic and all. Yeah. You have so much mm -hmm. more time giving back to you and, yeah. and the creative people were always creative. They just didn't have enough time to create. So, yeah. you know? I was like, universe. it took technology like five years. Like, I don't, the metaverse probably would have been another two, three years away before right, the pandemic didn't right, happen. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> The pandemic forced people to learn yeah. how to use social media to make money. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's where we also came in very strong. Beginning of pandemic, we had no trouble with any sort of business in, in, in what we did because we our work money. is digital. Yeah, we made so more money. People more. were calling us, hey, we need the verifications or we need the promos, we need the publications and so on and so forth. And we we kind of turned it around. And at that point, when the pandemic happened, it put people in a position of pressure where they felt, OK, we have time, but we also don't know what to do. Let's scramble on and jump on. Yeah. I have been an A&R for over 10 years, but I did not know how to actually make music technically by using the the software like the recording software or the mm. editing software during a pandemic studios were closed so i couldn't you had work to do it from your home i had to figure out how to do it went and you know got an in-home studio learned how to play the piano in two weeks placed my very first record three months later during mid-pandemic with a major artist you know so you you could do what your mind puts you to but you got to have that support if you don't have the right support you're not gonna get there. So like you said, you know, uh, even in LA, they don't support people within LA. They'd rather bring everybody yeah. else in. So we call them transplants yeah. when you get the transplants. And that's why yeah. people are like, oh, I hate LA. I, why do you hate LA? LA is not Hollywood, mm. you know what I mean? But yeah. Vegas isn't spread out like that. Vegas is Vegas. That's why I keep coming back to Vegas, whether it be for music work, whether it be to work with him. Sometimes I'll just come hang out with him just so we could be in the same room together on the computer working that on energy. things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, 
uh, you know, like you said, like the creative process of how it works is the way he came up with Las Vegas Scoop. We have another business that we're working on right now. We're about to launch it. And we were at breakfast the other day and he goes, what can we name it? And I just looked at him after smoking a joint and I gave him the name and he was like, I like that. <laughs> I like just that. With it. Yeah, it's yeah. really quick with us, man. It works yeah. really easy. I'm sure it is the same with you guys. Like when yeah. it clicks, it clicks. Like there, it's like, it just, it's just oil in a machine. It just yeah. works. We learned like, cause we've been going on four years now with our with our podcast and it's funny, we've had so many different business people on and it's funny, they've all said in, in so many words and their style is like, you was just lazy during the pandemic mm. if you didn't come up. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And you just mentioned that now, absolutely. you came up with your own little idea, you mm-hmm. know, right. a year ago and it's absolutely exploded. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's how I heard about it from, you know, from the TMZ mm-hmm. uh, branding. So I'm like, this, mm-hmm. this is amazing what you're able to do. So I love what you guys are doing. What what else would you say, like for example, for business people, right? Like, you have your Facebook ads, like you were talking about before. You know, you got Instagram, you got all these different platforms. What would you tell them is their best place to market their brand or product? Now, because things are happening so fast. The internet. I mean, that's really where it's at. It's the fastest yeah. way you could reach the most people. Mm-hmm. But you also, I would, you know, implement the grassroots. Back in when we didn't have the internet, everybody yeah. was out in the streets handing out flyers. Physical. Sure. Physical connection with people is also a very important thing when it comes to, so I guess it's a balance of both, but yeah. mostly the internet, which is again why we thrive. Las Vegas Scoop it kept getting shut down, but kept getting hella followers every yeah. time a new account came up because it's a there's a demand for it. People wanna know what's going on in the city. Yeah. So if you present it the right way, that's gonna be accepted. I mean, I don't, we don't even have, like we don't have E! Entertainment or any other, you know, mm. uh, podcast or any other visual production company coming in in LA doing what he's doing in the clubs. Yeah. You know, I spent the whole weekend with him, I was here for the Grammys, mm-hmm. spent the whole weekend with him going to clubs and he was in there, you know, interviewing the DJs, interviewing mm-hmm. the, the talent and just getting a whole scope of things. Cause a lot of people that haven't been to Vegas can also live vicariously through, through his posts. Yeah. yeah, which a lot of people do. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah, do that sure. a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. The nice thing is now everything is global. Like you used to talk about Colombia. Mm-hmm. People can learn you in Colombia mm-hmm. and then they watching you here. And that's and why the internet is the best place yeah. to get your brand out. Yeah, yeah, so and they want the real yeah. story, not the the marketing mm-hmm. or sold story. Yeah, right, they want right, what's right, actually right. happening. Nah, I don't I don't filter my my personal Instagram is is me. That's that's me. That's it's take it or leave it, you know, raw, uncut. You know, I, I do marketing, but if I spend all day talking about marketing and, and business stuff with people, people would tune me out yeah, because yeah. they don't they don't care about that stuff at the end of the day until they need it. Until yeah. they realize they need it, then they're like, oh, <laughs> damn, I need that, I need that. And then you're like, oh, now you care, you know? Yeah. But, um, you know, everyone everyone likes to laugh and I'm, I'm, I keep it light and funny yeah. overall. Um, yeah, you know, it's funny you talk about time. that. So we were laughing offline. We were gonna be a real estate podcast. Before. Yeah, I was like, we're gonna get bored out of our mind. Yeah. We were supposed to do yeah. like six, seven years Way ago, and I said, I can't yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah we'd be bored, but yeah. it's, it's true. You got to make people feel good. You got to give them something to look yes. forward to. Yeah, 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 yeah that's what we strive for a goal or something to learn. That's yeah, the yeah. For sure. real estate for is sure. boring quick. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's not for everybody. That's for sure. With people now, like with music changing so much, right? Like you were saying, you learned the piano in two weeks to be able to do it. What would you tell somebody that wants to put their record out or whatever it is, or maybe they want to, you know, build their own label? What mm-hmm. would you tell them now? Just some quick business advice or nugget. Get it done. Get yourself yeah. an LLC. It, it's yeah. it's 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 a couple of bucks to get that done, but ultimately set the blueprint and the foundation of what you want to do, and make sure that your content is out there. Content is king. Um, mm-hmm. One person might not like it, but ten people after that may like it. You know, or the first ten people might not like it, but then a hundred people after that might like it. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, discouragement is a very very. Uh, uh, it happens often. A lot of people get discouraged because they're afraid of what others might think about what they do. But mm-hmm. really, if you want to get your music out there, contact Steve or I. Yeah. You know, that's number <laughs> one. Yeah. And number two, just you know, get it out there because if you do get it out there, Steve and I can probably get to it. So yeah, you know. And you're big on the blue check, man. I see you. Mm-hmm. You know all. What is up with all the fake blue checks that are on there where people are trying to? Draft is that real? Or so what is, I heard that, that yeah. and I've and yeah. I don't think it's a thing. I really don't think yeah, it's I don't, a I thing. That, I was reading yeah. a whole thing on. I don't think they have things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no such so thing how as people a people drive you, but like how no, do they? You know what I'm saying. Yeah. There's no such thing as a fake blue check because the only way you can get it is from Instagram. Instagram has, Instagram to, has yeah. to give you that check. So mm-hmm. so I worded the, it wrong. Like the people that are reaching out to you to get your 
she gets you verified. Uh, yeah. you mean the, I, wor I worded so. it wrong. But yeah. what you said was actually a thing. Yeah, yeah that's a thing. That there is a rumor okay. going around that you can get a fake blue check. Yeah, they, and and okay. it's, a, it's absolutely impossible to get okay. a fake blue it's, check okay. on Instagram. Right, right. Okay. That's the thing. That was like for, for like a month of like people were asking me about that. And I'm like, you can't get a fake. Well, because there the was, uh, who was it? It, it was these, it was these two, I forget who it was. They were on a Breakfast Club like mm -hmm. um, podcast and they were like, oh, now people are getting these fake blue checks. And the way you can tell is if you go click on the three little buttons and it click on there about this profile, mm -hmm. if it doesn't have any information, if they don't have that about this profile, then it's a fake account with a fake blue check. Mm -hmm. But when I got verified, yep. my account didn't have the about this either for mm -hmm. about two weeks. Weeks, and then when the inner when the algorithm when they collect the information about your account sure now if you go to my account it has the about this account profile mm -hmm. you know, tab so okay. so um, that's not real it's just a matter of people yeah, trying to yeah. get you the media and but get you the and and yeah. to answer your question about the people that come and there's a lot of people that will promise you the blue check and and you know while they don't have the ad those are just scams you know to get take it, your money to take yeah, your yeah money. it's just scams yeah. and that yeah. kind of makes our job hard as well because people even when before we got the blue check it was really people were like, oh, well, why don't you have the blue check if you can dish out the blue check? Got it. Mm -hmm. Well, because A, I, I wasn't an artist. I wasn't doing anything like that. Yeah. So for me, it was I'm more entrepreneurial. Instagram wasn't you know, doing that. They weren't verifying entrepreneurs or anything yeah. like that. And then, you know, musically, when we started getting the music credits and there's music with our name out there, it was a lot easier for us to get it done. Plus our articles, if you Google his name or my name, you'll come up to a ton of articles that mm -hmm. state what we do, marketing, music, and all. So, you know, as, don't click any DMs. Don't answer yeah. any DMs of verification because Instagram will never DM you or ask you to, to pay right. them for verification. That's the number one way everyone's getting hacked right now. They're getting their face. Hey, I, I got to send a, 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 Pitch a code to, to a number, but I can't, you know, it's like a weird, sketchy story that doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. And then they get you to click on the link, and as soon as you click on the link, it there's a script that runs on your profile that basically removes your phone number, email, changes your password, resets your password, all like all within a matter of seconds. It does all this. So before you can even stop, Same. oh no, that wasn't me. That was you know <laughs> what I mean. Done. Like it's you already lost the account. You're out of it. And then they're gonna message you and say, all right, now if you want this account back, we need five grand. Dang. Damn. There's a there's a new bug, <laughs> there's a new bug going around yeah. too now. It's pretty much um, there's 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 a group of hackers that are moving moving very swiftly on Instagram, disabling accounts. There's yeah, there's Cardi a Cardi B's account got it got disabled. You can they can disable an account by reporting impersonation. My account was disabled three months ago for impersonating myself. It took <laughs> how it, so? Yeah, th they just reported the hackers. There's a way. There's a loophole on the back end of Instagram where if you get enough reports of impersonation coming, and all it takes is about fifty to hundred reports. There's websites where you could pay hundreds of dollars. It's like four or five hundred bucks to send five hundred reports to your to that to that Instagram or to that to that. <laughs> so post. you gotta pay to be a hater. Yeah, yeah, so people yeah, that's literally, up, yeah, right, someone yeah, that's DM'd a lot of me work. on my <laughs> other account was all like, yo, somebody definitely like hates you enough to pay for it. They paid almost 5,000 to get my account Jeez. banned because of the amount of Better watch out for that person. That but what rough. they do is- We all love here, leave us alone. Dude. What they do is they go, <laughs> they, they ban the account and then they DM the, the they, they figure out a way to DM somebody that they knew before and say, this hey, we can get this man. person's account back at $10,000, $20,000. I had to pay pay 60 grand to get a client's account back. 5.1 million followers. Jeez. But see, people don't realize, like you said, my, MySpace, right? We talked a little bit about MySpace. Mm -hmm. Everybody's driving so much traffic. Mm -hmm. So to pay $60,000 and you got that marketability right. is worth but it. But of course yeah. it is, and that's yeah, what Yeah, we, that's how yeah. we appraise, you of know, course, like yeah. somebody who loses an account that has 500 <laughs> followers isn't the same as someone who loses yeah. 5 million. You know, there's yeah. there's reach, there, your audience is valuable. You know, at the end of the day, yeah. people pay for advertising on Las Vegas Scoop because they see the, 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 mm -hmm. the reach. They see, oh, yeah. you get 20,000 story views, I get 50. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get not, we'll get messages of people like, "Yo, can you recover our account?" Yeah, I need the handle name and the amount of followers. They'll give you the handle name and they'll be like, "Oh, it only had three thousand followers." The question is, do you make more money off of those three thousand followers on your Instagram than you're going to spend to get it back? Right. 
it is it's it almost worth like it? an ego right. thing like you too. said is it worth yeah. it it's yeah. not worth it we can build you an instagram account up to a hundred thousand followers organically within six months for wow. the same amount that you're going to spend to get that three thousand account back wow. we can even curate it and manage it for you but a lot of these people don't understand because they're afraid to spend on something that they don't understand of. You know what I mean? Got it. So even now we have our blue checks, still people doubt us. Are you are you are you legit? Can you really get it yeah. done for us? Yeah, we'll even we'll even give you some people will even give them a fifty percent deposit. Normally it's we gotta pay people out. Yeah. And that's another thing they don't understand that we're not one per, we're not one person. We don't sit in front of the computer all day. We have a team. Got so it. we have overhead. So ultimately a lot of people that come to us, they they want what they want, but they're not ready to get there. Got you know, like I want to yeah. drive a Ferrari. Yeah, I don't have the money for a Ferrari, yeah. but I'm going to the dealership and saying, give me that Ferrari. Like, so well, how are they going to give me the car for free? You know, mm -hmm. you expect yeah. me to work for free? No, we're not for you. You, yeah. you can't, if you, if you want a certain level of, of, of exposure, mm -hmm. we have access to giving it to you, but you have to understand that it, it, there's pr there's protocol. You have to get yeah. things set up to be able to get to where you want to get to. I wanted to ask too, kind of the difference of y'all's perspective. Like, for example, Instagram, I know you use that. Do you channel Facebook? Because it seems like Facebook is just so messy, you know, a lot of, a lot of times. It seems like Instagram is easier to, mm -hmm. to go through. Do you feel like Facebook is still a good area to market in and run ads in or? Yeah, Facebook's still the number one um, way to market and promote things if you're doing it right. Because fa mm -hmm. what Facebook has that the more than anybody else is analytics. They got yeah. data. Yeah. They know everything about you. Sure do. They know yeah. every, and they've known mm -hmm. everything about yeah. most everybody since, what, 2005, mm -hmm. six. Yeah. They, they've been known you. They've, they've watched you. That data time. mining is they've just. They've been on your phone. They have all your cookies. They're, the, the data that Facebook has. It's kind of scary. Yeah. Is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. They literally know everything. So with that information, they have the most power still because they can touch any specific person in the world. Okay, you want, um, you know, kids in Manila that listen to this type of music, that like this type of food, that go to these type mm -hmm. of uh, schools uh, to hear this. Okay, cool. It's gonna cost you this much. <clears throat> and yeah, they got it. And they're the gonna, analytics. You said the key word reach, is the analytics. They're yeah. gonna yeah. reach those people because even if Facebook isn't popular in America, it's popular everywhere, everywhere else. else. Yeah. Literally every mm -hmm. country I go to, I ask somebody, you got Instagram? No. You got a Facebook? Yes. Mm -hmm. You got a Facebook? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I did. A, I set up a whole uh, Philippines, Thailand, and Australia tour for my artists, literally just off Facebook. Yeah, I use nothing else. That's wild. Yeah. yeah I, to be I, fair, I, I never use. I only use Facebook. Yeah. I, you know what it is? Like, maybe because day. I don't. I've <laughs> noticed now. Like this is the new TV, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Facebook's TV, Twitter's a TV, Instagram's a TV. So that's mm -hmm. the way I look at. it. Mm -hmm. I like the way that Instagram is a TV because it seems like Facebook is just. You right. get lost in it. Right. You, know, you get lost in it. But you're right, 100%. The, yeah, day, right. the analytics is, is yeah, everything. When, when I need to touch a specific audience, I'm using yeah. Facebook. I'm not using Instagram. Yeah, I'll show That's you what point. I'll yeah, show you what point. my monthly spend is on yeah. Facebook ads and what the reach is. Mm -hmm. And, you know. Just so that's just just on the back end side, so you know, because I don't wanna I can't get the the information out, yeah. out yeah. loud. But yeah. look at the spend versus the reach. That's monthly. Yeah. So you're looking at 50 million reach for that amount every month. No, that's, that's not a lot. bad. That's a lot of people. Yeah, I gotta tap in with them, man. They know. They know what they. 32 doing. million eyeballs every month to go to your music video, to go to your pictures. Now Facebook owns Instagram, so yeah. Well, Meta, not Facebook yeah. anymore. Yeah, Meta. Meta. Yeah. <laughs> so Meta owns Instagram. So what happens is when you're an artist and you link your Instagram to your Facebook, and then your Facebook is linked to your Twitter, then your Twitter and your Instagram and your Facebook are linked to your website. Now when you run an ad on Instagram you connected it to your Facebook. So now that ad is running on in, on Facebook. Yep. But if you do the 
the the the the the if you set it up and get all the parameters through Instagram, you're not going to get the same reach as you would if you went and did it on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Facebook has That's a lot more options. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 fine. you have to use the desktop in order to get maximum results because again, the Facebook Ads Manager app on the phone is limited to certain mm-hmm. things as That's well because yeah. you know, the I the the UI can only handle so much versus what the actual computer and desktop software can. Yeah. But Generally, you know, Facebook is a more of a family oriented, you know, platform. So you have a wider audience, whereas Instagram is the same wide audience, but Instagram people want fun, they want sexy, they want luxury, and they want music. Mm-hmm. On mm-hmm. Facebook, you have, you know, the 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 Mary Poppins is the the knitting the club, knitting club the club. book club, yeah. the you know, the president's, you know, coin collection mm-hmm. club. Yeah. If you're a coin collector, Instagram is not the place for you. Right. Yeah. Facebook, you're gonna find anything everybody and everybody, mom. anything yeah. that you yeah. need. Right. Yeah. I saw, I like glad you broke that down. Yeah. Man. So you aligned, man. You aligned because you just say yeah. that for a minute. That's true. Yeah, because for me, it's like yeah. Facebook is is more modeled off of Google. And Absolutely, their yeah. advertising platforms yes. are. That's his brain. Like, yes. That's his brain. And Instagram sure, yeah. being a lot yes. different, it's a little yes. bit more like Instagram, a Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, Instagram is for low attention span people to consume smut. Yeah. <laughs> what you trying to say, Chris? You just pop out and to get, to get, to get into it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's true. It. I use the YouTube, but that's that's good. I'm glad you guys are breaking that down. Yeah. Just kind of transition a little bit. And now I know I know you from LA, but Cop, I gotta ask you, man, what is your favorite restaurant in Vegas? Mm, it's Pepper Lunch. Pepper, pepper lunch? lunch? What is yep. what is that? I ain't yeah, never I'm heard glad of it. Glad you asked. So Pepper Lunch. I ain't never heard a, of that. Pepper Lunch is a Japanese uh food chain restaurant. I lived in Japan for eight years, so I used to eat this shit every day. Okay. It's basically your own hibachi style food in your plate. You oh, cook the food in your plate. They heat the plate up, they put the rice, they put whatever meat you want, fish, vegetables, pasta. Where's that? Where's that? Yeah, where is that at? It I is I never on, heard of that spot. Uh, it's on Spring Mountain. It's in Chinatown. In town? Okay. Yeah, it's in Chinatown. That's, a, that's a new one. Pepper yeah, Lunch. Yeah. Okay. I take all my artists, I take DJs, celebrity guests. They're like, take me to something that I ain't never had before. I'm like, you've been to Japan? They're like, no. I'm like, cool, then I know you never had this. Okay. Take them to Pepper yeah, Lunch. Like you said that quick, too. So yeah. That's uh, yeah, <laughs> no quick. hesitation. There's, no hesita- <laughs> there's others that are closed, but there's no hesitation. Pepper um, Lunch. Okay. Pepper Lunch is great. It's cheap. It's clean food. You're not going to get fat, but you get full. Okay. It cooks in front of you, so it's fresh. And it's, I like just, that. it's just good, man. I, I can't really... You just have to try it, you know. It's like trying to explain color to a blind person. You can't. <laughs> got to do it. You just got to go do it. And, well, you and said it fast. It so I know it's. I know it's. Pepper right. lunch is yeah. good, followed by uh, urban crawfish. If you know, I like a good seafood boil. So urban crawfish okay. is probably my second favorite place. That's what's up. Okay. I don't like the the strip and all the yeah. carbones yeah. and the yeah. catch and all the tourist traps. Yeah. Food spots like STK. That you paying is okay. a grip? That you paying a grip for? I'm gonna go with that yeah. cheap, good quality okay. food versus the overpriced. You know tourist food like, I'm cool. every time every time i ride out of vegas i make my stop at skinny fats yeah, skinny, skinny fats, fats. Okay. Skinny yeah. fats yeah. is absolutely one of my yeah. faves i've been eating yeah. that yeah. Four tacos, five years. Yeah. Yeah. i'm, I'm skinny fats skinny definitely fats. a yeah. top yeah. Yeah. you got the happy yeah. menu and you got i'm gonna agree with you menu, on that that's so, a good spot you know you can't yeah. go wrong with yeah. skinny fats that's a top 10 yeah. location for sure. and they got a bunch of them so that's what's up are they are they franchising different markets or is that vegas i think it's just vegas it's vegas they were supposed to come up to la uh from what i understood two years ago before the pandemic they were preparing yeah. LA, but the pandemic stopped their LA opening. They have a great Alice franchise model. I'll tell you yeah. that. They're ready. Mm-hmm. Alice knows the franchise on. I'll tell mm-hmm. you all but fast. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. So y'all gave some gems, man, with those with those three spots. Mm-hmm. Um, what else are y'all focused on to finish up the year 2022? Oh, man, right now we're, we're, we're continuing to do what we do on the marketing side and mm-hmm. kind of just try to help uh, you know as many people as we can through that um, mm-hmm. with what we can provide. But it's 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 never slowing down and never being complacent you know um we have ideas on a daily basis and some stick some don't but one of them that recently stick stuck was uh on our recent trip to colombia um there's a huge market out there for international business in multiple multiple different avenues and the fact that uh they have the lifestyle, the nightlife. They have, they have, you know, the women. They have the clubs. Like for the culture. Uh, we went, the culture. The we culture. went the food. Oh, like Kinda everything food about the, the place is great. And and if you're there with the mindset of business, you're gonna find something to do. So now you know we're on a new venture that we're starting. Um, we're going back on the 14th to get things set up. 
the blueprint is there so you guys will hear about it um in coming weeks but ultimately it's it's just keep on moving for us and 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 getting more bags you know yeah. it's like we Creative, we, we turn down deals on a daily basis because we're we're picky on who we do business with we've we've been the ones that took every job that came our way because it's a job why are you yeah. going to turn it down a dollar is a dollar regardless right but then you start realizing we don't have a customer service, you know, call center no. <laughs> to, to handle all the bullshit with people calling and saying all kinds of weird shit. So yeah. now we start filtering it out, you know, and the only way you filter that out is, is you know, by, by being exclusive yeah. to to a certain a certain type of crowd. And that yeah. reflects on your prices. A lot of people will talk to, they'll waste our time for two hours. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh well, I'll call you when I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. So yeah. we 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 don't want that. We just want we just want, you know, people to come in and, and understand how we can help them and, and let us do what we can do. That's what's up, man. Undersell yeah. and over deliver. Yep. That's my business motto for life. Yep. You know, because yeah. a lot of times most people do it backwards. They're gonna sell you the dream mm -hmm. and the product is gonna be crap. You know, I prefer yeah. To undersell, like, oh, you know, we're gonna try our best. You know, we're gonna try to make this happen for you. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm about to wow him. He's gonna, mm -hmm, he's gonna yeah. lose his shit yeah. as soon as I give this to him because I already know it's, yeah. it's more than he expected. Yeah. You know, you pay for one thing, I'm gonna probably give you three things just so you come back. That's what's up, mm -hmm. man. And that's how you get return yeah. business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how you figure it out, man. Y'all work Jeff, well man. together, man. Y'all yeah, vibe off each other, man. That's yeah. good, man. We rooting for y'all. <clears throat> Where can people reach you guys at for your social handles and everything? Um, you can reach me Instagram at Chill Capo L V L V like Las Vegas um, C H I L L C A P O Chill Capo dot com. Mm -hmm. um, everything's pretty much Chill Capo Twitter Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, website has all the contact. I'm not hard to reach. You yeah. Know. That's what's up, man. Yes, what sir. And, uh, mine is just Pierre, my first name, P-I-E-R-R-E -R -R -E on the gram. Um, there's a link in my bio that'll link you guys to all other websites and all other informational places you need to go to. Yeah. So go hit that follow, at Pierre, mm -hmm. at Chill Capo. Just follow them, man. They, they doing it, man. They want, And get you that blue check. Yeah. So that, that's what's up. Let us help talk you get online. that the real check. Yeah, the, the real one. Not the, the real one. Pocket, <laughs> pocket trying to sell some <laughs> fake no, blue checks no. over here. Absolutely. No, we appreciate y'all hanging out, man, and appreciate representing the game, man. Give us some yeah, knowledge, definitely. man. So y'all good you. folks, man. And um, check it, us out at VegasCircle.com. So appreciate y'all, man. Good stuff, man. Shout out VegasCircle.com. Yeah, appreciate y'all. Yes, sir.